guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate your life to the next level. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. By a show of hands, how many of you were here last Wednesday uh, for our message keys that Pastor Virginia had for us? What a solid, solid word, let me tell you. Um, I'm sure like many of you uh, who got the chance to hear it, uh, you can relate to it at some point in your life where uh, you, you can see where God was making notches and, and there's opportunities that God was really using to form something out of. And if you haven't had the privilege to hear that, you know, check it out on our YouTube channel. Um, it's really, really a solid word in season. Such a great twist of even that verse that she shared with us. Uh, but, you know, I, I was listening to it and I actually went back again and, and listened to it again because... Uh, that night that she spoke that it really it really took me back into a place where I was able to really put in perspective all that God has done in my life just so that he can do what he's doing not only now but even in what's to come with my life. And it really just painted a strong picture uh, of the fact that, you know what, that God is molding and shaping and, and allowing for things to take place and permitting opportunities to present themselves in my life so that I can have these notches created that ultimately I would become this this key for his kingdom and I just was like wow uh, that's that makes so much sense you know I, I think that we think so much about about process and systems and and we hear about it a lot and so we, we kind of just accept that life comes with processes and life comes with systems and and it's ultimately going something's good's going to come out of it but to know that you're going to be utilized as a purposeful tool for his kingdom that that gives you almost a sense of relief like well there is an end goal in mind and that end goal is that I would come under into what God has created me for and that I would do something about it and I would utilize, I'm not going to let all those painful memories just be made in vain. I'm going to let them create something that's going to bless someone, that's going to uplift someone. And so that's a, that was such a strong word. And it just reminded me that, that while not everyone's key will look alike, not everyone's key will look the same. The same translates to not everyone's process is going to look the same. You're right. My process is going to unlock another door than Steve's process will unlock or LaCarlos. It's going to change. It's going to look different from the person next to me. What I went through may be painful to me, but it may not have been painful to the person next to me. Maybe they were able to handle it a little differently. Maybe it's an experience that they may have processed differently in their mind. They dealt with it a certain way. And so I, I thought about that. I'm like, well, not everyone has the same process, but everyone has to deal with it at some point. At some point, you're going to have to face and deal with this process whether you like it or not, whether it's appetizing or it's just straight up disgusting, the things that you go through. Whether it's something you desire or something that you appeal, that you're like, I want nothing to do with it. I don't agree with it. But at some point, you're going to have to deal with it. We're going to have to deal with it. But the beautiful thing about that is that God will always throughout that process remind you and equip you with things to remember as you're going through it. That remind you of his character and what he thinks about your life and what he values about your life as you're going through it. He won't let you forget. He's not going to set something in motion just to abandon it. He's not going to neglect what he created with his own hands. He won't do that. He will remind you, and it, he will have to go through it, but he's going to throw in some reminders in there that's going to help you along the way. And so tonight I want to talk about, and specifically, four things that God uses to, to remind us about dealing with our process and dealing with this time of, of creating something that will be of benefit in the days to come with your own life. And that's going to, while we're doing that, let's go ahead and go to our uh, Bibles. Uh, go to Psalms chapter 111. How many of you got your Bibles with you tonight? What about your phones, your iPads, whatever you got to get the word up and going? Go ahead and get that out. They're going to put it on the screens. And while they do that, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your perfect word that reveals perfect truth in our lives, God. That without your word, we understand that that we're susceptible to lies and to things that aren't true about our own personal lives and our journeys and our processes. But God, I pray that tonight, that through your perfect word, you would speak a truth that would sit in our hearts. 
that would transform even the way we think about certain things, that would allow us to see life through another window that maybe we've neglected because of the hurt and the pain and the discouragement or disappointments that we have gone through on our journeys and on our processes in life, Father. We thank you that your Holy Spirit would even convict those things through your word tonight that would help us to look more like you, to help us abandon ourselves and embrace who you really are, God. And so I pray tonight, God, that, that we would have ears to hear for the very word that's going to bring us freedom, that we would have a heart to receive the very word that would bring healing into our lives, God, that we wouldn't push back or even, or even tighten our grip but we would be open and relaxed to know that, God, you're going to speak something that's going to catapult me into my destiny. It's going to catapult us into where we belong in your kingdom so that we can use what you're doing in our lives for someone else, Father, to be lifted up as well. So we thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. If you agree with that, say amen. A big old amen. Psalm 111, you guys there? Starting in chapter 5, verse 5, I'm sorry says this, he provides food for those who fear him. He remembers his covenant forever. He has shown his people the power of his works, giving them the lands of other nations. The works of his hands, they are faithful and they are just. All his precepts are trustworthy. They are established forever and ever, enacted in faithfulness and uprightness. He provided redemption for his people, and he ordained his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. So within this here, there's four things. Say four things. There's four things that God does to remind us of his character in our lives and his character as we go through a journey. And in this psalm that we see, we see David reciting these things as he as it comes to memory, as he's remembering what God has done, as he's remembering these opportunities, he's remembering these moments, these are things that, that, that are impressed on his mind, impressed on his heart, that allows him to have courage to keep going, that causes him to rejoice in the joy of knowing that his God has his back, that his God will not let him down, that this is a, this is a very much so encouraging, encouraging psalm, but it's important to note that this encouraging psalm is not encouraging because the moment for David has been great, but it's encouraging because it's a reminder for David when things aren't going so well. So it's, it's designed to bring hope in a time that's hopeless. And so here we have four things that God does through this text here as we're going through a process. The first thing that he does is that he provides. We see in verse 5 there that he says he provides food for those who fear him. So it's just a reminder that, listen, those who honor God, those who respect God, you don't have to worry about lacking. He's got you. He's going to provide for you. You're going to be taken care of. You don't have to be afraid of having lack. Uh, if you're in a moment of a hopeless situation where you're lacking or you feel like the numbers aren't adding up, it's okay. It's all right. He provides food for those who fear him. How many of you fear God tonight? You have respect for God. You honor God, right? God is faithful to you. Well, fear not. He provides. He will take care of you. So he reminds us. He says, he provides. The second thing to note is he remembers. The third thing he has shown, and I'm going to talk about this right now. And last, his precepts or his commands, they are trustworthy. Trustworthy. So these are just four things that, that, that I really believe that um, are like this ingredient, this recipe uh, for us to keep our sanity when we feel like it's being robbed, when we feel like it's being taken away, when we feel like it's, it's really just hard to grasp. And, and when we read this, we're, we're, seeing the, we're seeing really God's character. We're seeing that he is God, our provider. 
We're seeing that he remembers. In other words, uh, though he, you are experiencing a time where maybe you feel abandoned, he, he has not forgotten you and he has not forsaken you. And, and he remembers why he created you. He didn't just start something and forget about this person like, oh, well, um, what was that his gifts are? Or what was his purpose again? Or what is she good for again? He doesn't, he doesn't have amnesia. He doesn't just forget. He remembers, right? Things, things that he does, he remembers. And he has shown his people the power of his works. In other words, at some point or another, there has been a moment whether you were saved and you believed God and you, you followed God or maybe you didn't. Maybe you had no knowledge or, or understanding of God. But some point in your life, you saw God work. You saw God do things that you knew were impossible unless there was a God. And so he made sure, he said, look, I'm going to make sure uh, that they see that I am doing a work in their life. And they know that it's my hand and, and, and it, there's no possible way it could have been done without me. That they know that I am near. I'm not far. I'm near. And then his precepts or his commands are trustworthy. When God says he's going to do something, he's going to do something. When he puts it in his word that something will come to pass, it will come to pass. The same goes for when he warns us and says, hey, if you want to take this route, beware, because this is what it will lead to. And sometimes we, we want the, the trustworthiness of all his great encouraging warnings, but we, we, we don't acknowledge the trustworthiness of his warnings. And he will warn us and he will prepare you, but we just somehow forget that he's trustworthy. We somehow forget that. That if we ignore this wisdom that he's giving us and how to prepare for a tragedy or how to prepare for some bad news or how to prepare for even your shortcomings, right, or, or to prepare for a moment when you may slip and fall, we just tend to forget. But he wants to remind you, listen, what I have told you, what I've written in my word, it's trustworthy. I'm not saying it because I like to hear my voice. I'm saying it because I want you to hold to it and know that you can trust me, that you can, you can follow and you can believe what I'm saying. Another thing that we learn from this is that God doesn't forget or neglect what he creates, right? He, the reason why he's doing this is because he wants you to know he hasn't forgotten about you. I, I understand it's, it's going to be a process. I understand it's going to be a journey. But I, I didn't forget the purpose that I have for you, the plans that he tailor-made for your life. He, he's not going to put them on hold, right? The process doesn't mean that your life is on hold. The process means that there's actually something happening. There's actually movement going on. There's still motion, and your life is on its way to fulfillment in order for him to, to use you in that fullest capacity. When, when God created heaven and earth, he didn't just speak us into existence. He didn't just say, there they are, and then leave us. He promised us over and over that he'll never leave us nor forsake us. And so we, we understand that. That everyone's process is going to look different, right? You're, you're, you're going to know, and some of you have experienced that, right? You're talking to someone, you're having a conversation with a good friend, and you're explaining to them all that you're going through, how you've had a rough week, and, and their eyes just kind of glaze over, and they're just kind of just like there, just staring, and like, I don't know what's happening. I don't know what you're going through. I've never experienced it. And then you just, at the end of the conversation, the friend just kind of nods like, oh, yeah, I feel you. I feel you. That must, that must hurt. They have no idea what you're feeling. They have no idea what you're going through because they haven't gone through the same process as you. And it's okay to know that not everyone in your surrounding is going to understand your process. That doesn't mean you jump ship because no one understands. That doesn't mean you, you quit on it because it doesn't make sense at the moment to you, neither to someone else. So because we understand that not everyone's process is going to look the same, and we understand that I still have to go through it to get from A to Z. Listen, you still, in order to get from California to New York, things are going to change along the way. If you want to go from coast to coast, you're going to have some change of weather. You're going to have some change of pressure. You're going to have a change of some speed limits. You're going to have a change of, of culture. Man, you're going to have a change of your comfortability. You're not going to feel as comfortable halfway through as you did when you left. Or excited if you have kids. <laughs> it, this, this great idea of a road trip isn't so great anymore. This is punishment for my behavior. What have I done? Things will change along the way, guaranteed, on your way from coast to coast. 
if it stays the same, you're dreaming. It's, it's, this is, you're in the REM sleep right now. This is what's happening. You're just, you're in a deep sleep. Things are going to change. And it's okay to know that. We, we understand that when change is in our control, man, it's, it's, it's usually easier to handle. Right? Like, if you want to get a new haircut, you, you have control over that. If, if, you know, I like to personally, I, I always, and it, it makes my wife mad, but I like to do it. I like to take different routes home. Um, it, it makes her upset. But I like to do it. It's different, right? I like to see an extra mountain or two on the way home. I'm tired of seeing the same freeway. I want to see something different. I want to get to where I want to go, how I want to get there. Is that the wisest thing to do? I don't know, but it's change. And, and if I'm ever going to get used to change, I better start taking advantage of that change that I actually have control of. If, if I want to change a couch around the house or two, I'm going to do that. I have control over it. But the question that I feel like we need to start asking ourselves as we, if you really, if you really, really, really want to benefit from change in your life, if you want to make the most of it, I mean, you want to see fruit at the end of that process, you have to ask yourself, how do I deal with it when I'm challenged by change and it's no longer in my control? When I no longer have the choice to make a decision in a certain area, how am I going to deal with it? And I, and I say deal with it because uh, if you look at the definition of deal, it says to take measures concerning someone or something, especially with the intention of putting something right. Taking measures, doing something, taking action, working towards uh, uh, something, especially with the intention of putting something right. If, if you're going through a process in order for the final product to come out looking great and looking better than it was before, you got to take measures. You're going to have to deal with it. You're going to have to face it. You're going to have to address it. And so it's important that we ask that question. And in Proverbs 27, it talks about two ways that a person will deal with change that is out of your control. These are just two ways that it, it clearly states. Now, now, mind you, it, th these aren't just two of the similar options. These are two completely different ways. This is chicken or beef. Right, this, this, is, this is left or right. This is A or B. This isn't just, it's black or white. You're not going to deal with it in both ways. You, you have to think about how you're going to respond when there's a change happening in your life we have no control of. And this is what's going to happen. For some of us, we're going to choose one way. Other, others of us, we're going to choose the other way. The first part of this says, a person who is full refuses honey. This is Proverbs 27, verse 7. A person who is full refuses honey. So a person who is full is it's someone who, in other words, they have it all figured out. You're full. You're full of knowledge. You're full of understanding. You're full of experience along the way. You got it all figured out. You've learned from your mistakes. You've learned from what not to do and that you won't do it again. You've learned things. You, you got it all figured out. You got it all mapped out. It's having an attitude that you've arrived to this place of being satisfied or to a place of being content, to being okay with and well-fed. And sadly, we, we see this quite often um, even within the church, just, just full. And you know what? It, it's, it's sad because we're singing, we sing songs about fill me up, God, and, 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 and you know, I want the fullness and, and all of these things. And then you got a bunch of full people that there's no room for more. There's no room for it because I already know what filling me up looks like, God. I just need you to do it this way. I already know what your fullness is, God, because I've experienced your fullness. And I want, I want you to give me that fullness, not the fullness that you feel is important for my life at this time, but the fullness that I've experienced. Uh, you you want the fullness of 8, 10, 20 years ago, not the fullness of what's needed for the next 8, 10, 20 years ahead. And so we're, we're full of ourself. We're, we're full of our understanding. And it says that a person is who is full, refuses honey. So you're going to be full of yourself, so full of yourself, that eventually you're going to start refusing things that are actually beneficial to you. Things that God has placed in your life to help you along the way, tools he's given you to help you along the way. Uh, when you become so full of yourself, you're going to begin to refuse that. You're going to begin to say, I don't need this. It's foreign to me. I already have all that I know that I need. 
But he's trying to get you something you don't know that you need because it needs to get you somewhere you've never been. And it will never be able to receive that wisdom, receive that fullness, receive those tools, those opportunities if we're stuck on being full. We're going to refuse the honey. We're going to refuse what tastes good. We're going to refuse what allows other people to see and taste the God in our lives. Because we decided to be full of a past experience, of a past moment, not even permanent, a moment. And we want more of that moment. I don't know about you, I want more of what's new. I want to experience something I've never experienced. I want to see a new team win the Super Bowl. I want, I want to see something new, right? I want to see my daughter actually behave in a new way that's pleasing. She's great and all, but there's times I'm like, I don't I want a new Aria. I don't want this. I want a new one. There's, there's nothing wrong with new. It's just, it's going to be foreign. You can't expect it to look like what you thought was good at one point. You can't expect it to be something that mimicked a great time. You can't. It's going to be foreign. So in actuality, you, re, you refuse God's love. You're, you're going to refuse uh, because whom God loves, he corrects. So now, now you're so full, you can't receive correction. You're so full, you can't receive the discipline. How is God going to pour out a measure of love that you've never experienced if he can't even correct you? Because if he loves whom he corrects, he needs to show you things that you are doing that may be a little off that he can correct you in for you to come to a place of, wow, God, I, I needed this. And then to see where you end up, to know that he loves you in a greater measure. We want a newness of God's love, but a newness of God's love means I'm empty enough for you to show me where to go. I'm, 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 I'm okay with letting you lead me, God. I'm okay with it. I give you permission today to lead me. Show me where to go. To some of you, it may look like when, when, you, when, you're, not, uh, when you're so full of yourself, it may look like refusing to let go of certain toxic relationships. Uh, there's certain people in your life right now that you have refused to let go of. You have become so full of the pleasure that comes from that relationship maybe some time ago that you have not allowed yourself to let go of the toxicity it's creating in your life. And so there's these relationships that you're just like, oh, I just know they'll come around. I just know they're going to see they're going to see Jesus in me and they're going to light up one day and they're going to they're going to have an experience and encounter, but all along man it's just like it's just getting more and more toxic. You're getting more and more uncomfortable around them. You're getting more it's like you're going two different ways and you're just fighting to hold on for them to come with you and they're like I don't want to come I don't want to come with you. But you're you're refusing cuz you're so full, you're so full of what you want to happen that you don't you don't allow yourself to let go. You're refusing. You're refusing the relationships that even God wants to bring in, to bring life, to bring joy again. Or maybe, or maybe this, this fullness looks like you're refusing to change habits in your life that keep you in a cycle of feeling like you have failed. Uh, you, 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 you have this cycle of I feel like I failed. I feel like I'm not good enough. I, I feel like this. But then you allow yourself to go to the same train of thought. And, and instead, of, instead of getting some people around you who are going to encourage you and are going to actually point you as to what areas you can do best or maybe someone who's going to show you what you, you have done wrong but in a way that's actually esteeming, it's actually loving, it's actually going to build up your character. If you keep being your worst critic, eventually you're going to refuse, you're going to refuse even godly correction from yourself. From allowing yourself to hear the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. It's, it, it, the fullness being full of yourself will deter the fullness of God, period. It, it's going to deter it. But then you have this, this second part, right, the, the hopeful part, the, the, the promise part that we want to hold on to. The, it's, it's just going to be the other, some of us are going to deal with it the first way, other of us are going to deal with it this way. And it says that, but even bitter food tastes sweet to the hungry. Bitter food tastes sweet to the hungry. In other words, there's a hunger that surpasses the challenge. 
There's just a there's just a deeper hunger that 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 you're so hungry, man, that it, it, it's beyond. I don't I could care less about what I'm challenged with right now. I could care less about me not having control of the situation. I'm that hungry for it. I'm 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 in that place of hunger. It's like it's like being so hungry that even the most tasteless things in life taste amazing. Right? Or have you ever had those moments where you're eating something and you're just so hungry that what you're eating tastes like something completely different? Like it just you're like, what, what am I eating again? It tastes nothing like this. It just tastes way different. I, you know, there was there was a time, and it was pretty weird time, but there was a time when I was uh, I was a kid. I was around like six or seven years old and um, playing outside and, and having having fun with friends and running around all over the place. And and I, I'll never forget this time, man. I, I, was, uh, I was so thirsty. Like, I was incredibly thirsty. My mouth was dry. But you know when you're a kid? Like, you could, you could be having to pee, and you're still going to play. Like, you're just, like, you're just dancing around. You're thirsty. But, like, you still haven't got the chance to be the person who tags someone. So you're just like, no, I need my chance. Like, you just, you're still doing it, even though you know you have things to take care of. Like, I was that thirsty. Like, I surpassed thirst. Like, my mouth was beyond dry. And I remember just, like, I was, like, I had a moment where I could go inside the house. So I was excited. So I ran inside the house. And, you know, my first instinct was to check the fridge and look for something. I remember checking the fridge, I'm like, oh, man, there's nothing to drink. It's just food. I'm like, I'm thirsty. And I turn around, and I look on the counter, and there's an orange juice container right next to the stove. Just a future note, if you ever see a container next to the stove, if you're in that kind of household, it's, it's probably not what you imagine it to be. But I didn't know. So I'm thirsty, right? Again, I'm having a mirage moment right now. I'm just seeing, like, a river of, like, orange juice just right in front of me, right? Even the bottle looked like it was glistening, and it was just probably bacon grease. So I'm looking at it, and I'm just like, oh, man. So I, I, I'm excited. I'm thirsty. I grab the container. I open it, and I drink it, and it was bacon grease. It was the grossest. I'm like, it went down my throat, guys. It actually landed. It went past the taste buds. It went straight to my stomach. It was the greatest experience because I'll never touch an orange juice container by the stove ever again. And I remember, I remember thinking, like, I spit it everywhere. I was through the container. I was so mad because there still wasn't anything to drink, and I was still thirsty, and I just had this oily mouth. It was just the worst experience. Very graphic, I know, but just learn from this. <laughs> and I, I'm like, wow. I'm like, I was so thirsty. I didn't even put two and two together. I knew that my mom did that. I would help her. I knew that she used to pour in an orange juice container the old bacon grease. Why? I don't know. But she used to do it. And I knew this, but I was so thirsty that I could care less about what I was faced with. I could care less that I, all I saw was drink. I'm going to grab it. And, and that's the kind of hunger that will surpass your challenge. That's the kind of thirst. It's the hunger that goes beyond what the, the, the pain feels like beyond what even the, 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 the challenge of, of experiencing something new looks like. Beyond even being uncomfortable in the unknown. When you're thirsty enough, you can care less about entering foreign territory because you know that you are on a mission to receive what God has for you. I will, I will walk through it. I, I, I understand it's going to look Strange. I understand I'm not gonna I'm gonna lose sight of direction for a moment. I may get a little foggy getting there, but I'm thirsty enough to go for it. I'm thirsty enough to get it. And so when you're that kind of hungry, man, you begin to rejoice in receiving godly correction. Man, I'm thankful. I'm thankful that God shed some light into the area of my life because I was headed on a crooked path and he gave me the wisdom to get back on track. He, he spoke some things in my life that oh, hurt at the moment, but I know now I'm headed in the right direction. I'm going where I need to go. So hungry that, that you know at first it might be tough to swallow. It, it might be, be hard to get used to at first, but at the end of it all, it's going to bring transformation. And, and I want to close with this thought here. You see, the moment you refuse change in your life, you become full. When, when you refuse change, you're, you are physically symbolizing your fullness. Right? The universal right, sign for I'm full is just grab your stomach. Oh, I'm full. I'm, what, how do you recognize someone who's full of themselves? Is when they don't want to change. 
is five years later, there isn't a thing about them that's changed. And I'm not talking about appearance. That's one thing. I mean, that's a whole. But I'm talking about just their attitude, their, their, their desires even, their dreams. Their dreams haven't evolved. They're still going after the same attainable dream. When you, you know that they're capable of so much more. And maybe, maybe that finger needs to point to you tonight where, where there just hasn't been change in the way I, I even view my relationship with God. I, I haven't allowed myself to go deeper with God because I have been longing for a past experience. I've been longing for an old process, a process that I already figured out how to get from A to B all the way down to Z. I already figured it out. I want that process again. But if you begin to, to refuse change, you're going to find yourself so full that God can no longer download destiny or glimpses of destiny for your life. And I promise you that's going to lead to so much confusion to where you now start to believe the lie that God has no purpose for you. That you believe the lie that your purpose is, 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 is really expired. And you begin to believe these lies, and you begin to believe these lies. But listen, sometimes, if not often, you have to allow yourself to get a little hungry. Get a little thirsty. And in Matthew chapter 5, verse 6, he says, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Blessed are those. Man, they're, they're, if you're hunger, if you're hungry or if you're thirsty for righteousness, you will be filled. You won't just be filled for that moment, but you're going to be filled with the desire for more. See, because righteousness is really just a desire to want more of God. You, you, you want more of him. You want more of who God is. And so when righteousness is fulfilled in your life, when that, that void that you are asking God to fill with his righteousness it's now starting a chain reaction for you to want more, to pursue more, and to continue on. To get to the place where you're reminding yourself, like, you know what, it's not easy here, but man, thank you, God, that you provide. That you know what, God, I felt lonely this past month. I, I, it's lost so much change for me to handle. I feel like I'm in it alone. I feel like I'm not qualified. I feel like I'm not good enough for this kind of change. It's happening so fast that I feel like that I'm not going to hold on much longer. But thank you, God, that you remember why you created me. That you remember. That you remember my ins and my outs. You remember my purpose that you created in me. If today's message impacted you in any way and you want to help us spread the gospel with a financial gift, text the number below and we know that someone's life will be changed the same way that yours was today.